Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'll be going over how to implement a queue using two stacks. The first thing you want to note here is the distinguishing features of a queue and a stack. So in the case of a queue, we have this concept of first element in, first element out. And for stacks, we have this concept of last in, first out. In this problem, we're given these four methods to implement push, pop, peak, and empty. And we're only allowed to use functions that are unique to a stack. And those functions are right here. So push to top, peak slash pop from top, size, and is empty. And the tricky part about this problem is that we have this follow-up question here is, can you implement the queue such that each operation is amortized constant time complexity? And what I'm going to do is first go over a O of N time complexity and then go over how to optimize that O of N time complexity and make it O of 1 amortized. Say we have three elements we want to push onto our queue and let's say those three elements are 1, 2, and 3 in that order. So we have 1, 2, and 3 and when we go to pop elements out of the queue the 1 would go first then the 2 then the 3. And now how would we translate that into stacks? So what we want to do is once we know what elements we want to push in, we just push it on to stack 1. So 1, 2, and 3 in that order. Now we want to actually pop an element out of the queue. So we would expect to get 1 here. But if we were to just to pop from this stack 1, we would get 3. So what we want to do instead is pop every element in stack 1 and move it over to stack 2. So we pop 3 and we add that to stack 2. We pop 2, we add that to stack 2. And then we pop 1 and we add that to stack 2. And then we would pop on stack 2 and we would get our 1 here. And peak is essentially the same thing except you're not actually popping it. You're just getting the last elements in the array. So that's why we have the self dot stack to negative one here. So let's say you pop off this one here. And then afterwards, we need to restore the initial state stack one. So what we would do is pop all the elements of stack two and add it back into stack one. So stack two is empty. And what you're left with is this after the pop operation. And you can go on and keep doing pushes and pops and the algorithm will work as expected. And that's an O and O of N time complexity for both the pop and the peak algorithms. So I should change this O of N for peak here. So how do we remedy this? Well, first I would recommend you to pause the video and look over this code right now and see if everything makes sense. Now I'm gonna go over the algorithm to make it O of one amortized runtime. So let's go back to where we are appending, or we are pushing the numbers one, two, and three into the queue in that order. So what we would do is we would push these elements onto the stack. So one, two, and then three, and then now, when we go and do our pop operation, we would pop out a three, pop out two, and then pop out the one. Now we just pop out our one, and we return that one when we do our pop, and we're just left with two and three. Now, the next step would be to clear out stack two, and make that empty and move over the two and the three back into stack one. What you might notice is that we don't even have to restore the state of stack one. We can just keep this current state of stack two and whenever we want to push a new item onto stack one, we just push it on to stack one. And when we do a pop of stack of the queue, so second element we want to do a pop on would be two. So what you'll notice is two is already at the top of stack two. So we just pop that and then we return that. So essentially we have these two states 
and one state is where stack 2 hasn't been populated yet and the other state is when stack 2 has been populated so we have these if statements here to check whether stack 2 has been populated so for the pop we would first check to see if there are items in stack 2 and if there are then we just return we just pop the f element off of stack 2 and if it isn't we go through our original algorithm where we're popping every single element in stack 1 until stack 2 is populated and the same can be said about the peak method and we have this if statement checking to see if stack 2 has elements in it and if it does you just return the top element in stack 2 and one caveat here is that with this algorithm, we always have to keep track of what our front element in the queue is. So say when we want to do peak, we need to keep track of that element. Let's say that in the case that stack two is completely empty and we try to do a peak operation on it, we would see that there's nothing actually in stack two. So we would return this self.front and what self.front is pointing to is this right here. So how is it pointing to that? We have whenever we push an element and we see that there are no elements in stack one, we set that pointer, that front pointer, equal to that first element you push onto stack one. And after that, you would just return stack, or you would return that front value whenever you do a peak when stack two is empty. And one thing to note is both of these algorithms have an O of n base complexity. So we have two stacks here, which would be n plus n, and that reduces to just O of n. And if this video helped you out, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.